Power BI community. This is the August edition of the Power BI Monthly Update. I'm Jason Himmelstein, Principal PM Manager for Content Strategy in Microsoft Fabric. Hopefully you've been enjoying the changes that we've been making to these monthly videos. From adding new intro bumpers to giving a different look to the slides and many more demos, we're looking for ways to make this video more engaging. And most importantly, we're working hard to answer questions that you have in the comments. Keep the suggestions coming and we'll do our best to implement more positive changes. As always, for more information about the topics in this video, check out the updates blog. The link is in the video description below. Let's go ahead and get into it. Power BI Copilot and AI. You can now ask Copilot for data from your entire semantic model in Power BI Desktop. Just tell Copilot what you're looking for and Copilot will query your model to answer your questions with a visual. To use this new capability, you have to have the preview feature for Copilot chat pane in report view turned on. If you've already done this, then there's nothing else you need to do to utilize this new capability. Just go out and give it a try. Power BI reporting. Visual level format strings now in preview. Visual level format strings are here, providing you with more options to configure formatting. Originally built for visual calcs, the core ability that visual level format strings provide is the ability to format visual calcs. Since visual calcs are not in the model, you could not format them unless you were using them as a data in data labels or in specific parts of the new card and new slicer visuals. Now with visual level format strings, you can. Visual level format strings, however, are useful even without any visual calcs. Dynamic per recipient subscriptions now generally available. Dynamic per recipient subscriptions for Power BI and paginated reports are now generally available. They are designed to simplify distribution of a personalized copy of each report to each recipient of an email subscription. You define which view of the report an individual receives by specifying which filters are applied to their version of the report. The feature is now available in Sovereign Clouds as well. Deliver subscriptions to OneDrive and SharePoint is now generally available. Do you have reports that are too large to be delivered by email or eating into your email quota in a short period of time that need to be moved to a different location? You can now deliver Power BI and paginated report subscriptions to OneDrive or SharePoint. With this capability, you can schedule and send full report attachments to OneDrive and SharePoint locations. Updated save and upload to OneDrive flow in Power BI. Beginning in the first week of August, desktop users should see a preview to turn on the updated save and upload to OneDrive experience in Power BI. To enable this, navigate to the preview features section of options in Power BI desktop. Users will then need to select saving to OneDrive and SharePoint uploads the file in the background. With these updates, we've improved the experience of uploading new Power BI files to OneDrive and easily upload new changes in the background. Data limit. We're excited to roll out a great update that will give you more control over your visuals. We are introducing the data limit capability, your new best friend for managing performance hiccups. Have you ever had a visual that could just not handle the heat with too much data? Well, those days are over. With data limits, you set the maximum data load for a single session per visual. It's like putting your visuals on a diet, ensuring that they stay fit and perform at their best. Visuals. Shapes and Line Enhancements. We've been fine-tuning the visual enhancement of your reports, columns, bars, ribbons, and lines, and have given you the reins to craft those Cartesians with precision. With our latest update, we are bringing the legends and tooltips up to speed. Now they will reflect the style enhancements you have applied to your visual shapes and lines, just as you intended. No more mismatched presentations, just seamless, stylish consistency. All right, time for some demos. First one is visual level format strings now in preview by your own Hert. If you've used visual calculations, you will have noticed that there was no way of formatting these calculations. So for example, I have a visual calculation here that calculates the profit percentage by dividing uh, the profit by the sales amount. Notice how even though it's clearly a percentage, it's shown as a decimal number. And of course, we have the format function index, which I can use to format this. But this has the downside that it turns the output into text. So if I apply this, 
even though it looks fine on the visual matrix, you'll notice that the visual no longer works because now it's not a numerical value anymore. It's a text. So let's undo this real quick. Um, there is, however, good news. We are introducing visual level format strings, which allow you to format values on a visual. We're introducing these as part of the visual calculations preview. So you will need to enable that first before you can use them. You can use these visual level format strings, however, to format not just visual calculations, but anything on your visual. So I'm going to format the visual calculation from before as a percentage. So I'm going to into the format pane, switch to the general sections, and here's a new category called data format. In here, I can now select my profit percentage visual calculation, and I'm entering the same visual, uh, the same format string as before. And now notice it is now formatted as a, as a percentage, as well as the visual still works and is showing uh, the visual as before because it's a numerical it's a numerical value still and it's now nicely formatted uh, in a percentage. This is great, but we don't stop there because it, as I said, it this this doesn't just work for visual calculations; it also works for anything in the model. So it works for anything on the visual. So let's format the measure that is on this visuals, visuals here. So I have a profit measure in my model. Let me just open that up and we can see it's formatted in the model as a whole number. Okay, that's why this is now shown as a whole number on this table visual over here as well as here on this column chart. Now let's say that for this column chart specifically, I would like that to format that number as a currency, including the dollar sign, but I don't want to change the format in the model. I can do that now thanks to these visual level format strings that we've just seen. So with the visual selected, I'll go into formatting pane again, general data format, and now let me select the profit and then say, indicate I want to format this by as a currency. So now notice that the data label as well as the tooltips in this visual have updated to reflect these new settings. But again, the table visual on the right hasn't because that is using the model level format string. So far, so good, but we're not done yet because I've shown you two levels of format string. The lowest level is the model level. This, of course, applies to anything in the model, which means columns, measures. Um, but it also means that visual calculations cannot have a format string on the model level since they are not stored in the model. So the next level up is the visual level. We just use this to change the profit measure uh, format to a currency in this specific visual. We also use that to format a visual calculation before. Now, there is another level, the third level called element level format strings. And this level controls the format for your fields, measures, visual calculations for the exact element in the visual. And a format string set on a higher level overrides any lower level format string. So a visual level format string overrides a model level format string. Well, an element level format string overrides both the visual as well as the model level. This level, this element level uh, format string is currently only, only available for a limited number of visuals and elements, but it will be expanded in the near future. And the most prominent place you can use this today is in the data labels. So let's set a different format string for the profit measure in the data label here on this visual without changing the model nor visual level format string. Remember, what we're expecting to see is an unchanged format in the table visual because that's using the le model level format string, which is set to a whole number. We also don't want to change the format of the tooltip because we want to keep that as formatted as a currency, but we only want to change the data label. So that's where we will use the element level format string for the data label to override the format for just the data label. So to do that, let's get into the format settings again, go to visual, data labels, find value, and then indicate I want to work with profit and then set the display units to custom. Now I can enter a custom format code in here. So I'm formatting now as a currency, but then without any decimals. As you can see, the data labels have changed. Notice that it doesn't show any amounts in any decimals anymore. However, the tooltip shows the decimals as before, because that is using the visual level format string. And finally, the model level format string is set to a whole number. So that's why the table here on the right hasn't updated. 
To get started with these visual level format strings, you first need to enable the visual calculations preview feature in your desktop settings. And then afterwards, you can use these three levels of format strings, model, visual, and element level, to provide you with the maximum flexibility to get the formatting exactly as you want it. Our next demo is dynamic per recipient subscriptions that is now generally available by Nurapama Srinivasan. Extremely excited to announce the general availability of dynamic per recipient subscriptions. Let's get started with a quick demo. So here I have a sales overview report to which I'm going to subscribe. So I go ahead, click on subscribe on my report, and then create a subscription, dynamic per recipient subscriptions. Now here I can go ahead and pick the data set that has the recipient data. So here I'm going to select the employee training data, click on next. I'm going to pick uh, all of the information I need for the delivery of this subscription. So I pick the employee name, I'm going to pick their manager's name, I'm going to pick the email that we want this to be delivered to. I only want this to be delivered to employees who have completed the work that was assigned to them. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick status and I'll define the filter there. And I'm also going to pick category. I'll show you why in a minute. So first is I want to filter by status. I want to only send this to employees who have completed the task assigned to them. So I'm going to go ahead, click on completed. As you can see, I'm going to minimize the filter. You can only see those employees who have completed the training here. So I go ahead, filter the data set, go next. Uh, I'm going to email this. So I'm going to go ahead and pick subscription name to be whatever the sales overview. I want the recipients to be picked from my uh, data set that I picked. So I'm going to go ahead and say, and pick the email. I'm going to just have, uh, I'm not going to add a specific email subject. It'll pick whatever is default. All of this looks fine. Go ahead, click next. I'm going to map my data. I'm going to go ahead and say my industry is the same as category. Um, so that mapping, something that I want to do here. And then I want to be able to send this every day at 8.45 p.m. is what I want to do. Okay, go ahead, review your subscription. All of this looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and say save and close. Once you've done that, uh, the subscription should fire. I'll just show you a sample subscription as I'm demoing this. This is what it would look like. And then the report gets del delivered to those who have uh, the statuses completed. Thank you. The next demo is deliver subscriptions to OneDrive and SharePoint is now generally available. Welcome back, Nirapama. Do you have really large reports that you send on a regular basis to your email? and you want to solve for the problem of extremely large inboxes? Look no further than our new feature where you can now subscribe to reports and send them to your OneDrive or SharePoint locations. Let's get started and learn how to do this. So I've used a sales and marketing report for this demo. Go ahead and click on subscribe. Once you do that, create a subscription and say, standard subscriptions. Over here, I've named the subscription. I've left it as the default executive overview. I'm sending it to myself. I'm going to attach it as a full report. You have to if you need to send it to a SharePoint or a OneDrive location. I'm going to go ahead and click on PDF. I'm going to send it to the OneDrive location. I'm going to go ahead and pick my subscriptions folder. I have a folder called ODSP already created, and I'm gonna make sure it lands in this location. Okay, this feature is now generally available um, for for you to use. I've gone ahead and picked the schedule here as well. So start date is just today. Uh, I want this to be sent only monthly, uh, and say I want to send it on the first of every month at nine a.m. Same time zone. And then I want to also make sure I'm not getting a lot of these. So I'm just going to say 26th is the last day, right? 
go ahead, save this subscription. So it's called executive overview. It's going to my OneDrive SharePoint. You can now see that the report has been delivered. Our next demo is updated save and upload to OneDrive flow in Power BI by Anita Ambalavanan. With our new Power BI file, we're going to go and save it into OneDrive. We're going to locate the correct location in the OneDrive recent folder, rename our file, and hit save. From there, since we're saving a new report for the first time, a dialog box will open indicating that the file is getting saved to OneDrive. Once the file has been saved, we can edit and modify the report. Once we make these changes, we can hit the Save button, and the report will automatically upload in the background to OneDrive in the original location we saved it at. Once the file has been uploaded in the background, we can click on the toolbar and get a link to the file in OneDrive. Power BI Modeling. DAX Query View in the web. Write DAX queries directly on your published semantic models with DAX Query View for the web. DAX Query View is no longer only available in Power BI Desktop, but easily accessible when you're in the Workspace or Semantic Model Details page. Let's go ahead and see a demo of this by Zoe Douglas. DAX Query View, already available in Power BI Desktop, is now available in the web. From your workspace, you can right-click on a published semantic model you have permissioned to edit and simply choose Write DAX Queries. This will work with semantic models in Import, Direct Query, or Direct Lakes through Ridge Mode. Here I have a semantic model in Direct Lake Mode, built from a lake house getting data from one lake. So this DAX query is really querying the one lake. My sample query shows me the top 100 rows of my date table, and I can use other quick queries to get data from other tables and columns in my model using generated DAX queries. And I can quickly find out how many rows are in my fact table by writing the DAX query. Here, I want to evaluate a scalar value, so I put my DAX formula in curly braces to return it as a table for the results query. Using the format DAX function allows me to see the value a little nicer. And I can even format the query to make it nicer to read. And here I see I have 1 billion rows in this table. In addition to typing DAX queries, you can add or change measures. Let's create a new measure to show the average cost per order. I already have a measure similar to this called average profit per order, so let's save some time and use that as a template. I use quick queries to define with references and evaluate this measure. Now I see the DAX formula for it, but also the FAX formulas used in the reference measures. This way I can see the entire calculation flow. Not only can I see them, but I can edit any of them and then rerun the query to see how the results will change. Changes to the query scope measures do not change the model measures automatically. And I can hover over the measures in the DAX query to see which DAX formula is which. To speed up the measure creating process, let's first copy the average profit by order. I know there is a shortcut to copy selected lines. I can use the command palette to quickly find it and then use it. Now, two quick changes to the measure, and I'm done. I can use the same trick in the Evaluate block so that I can see the new measure in action, and simply click Run. This looks to be the expected results. The new measure is not in my model, but there is a code lens action available to add new measure. But first, let's clean up the change I made to the orders measure and format all these measures. Now I can see a button next to run shows I can update the model with all of these changes at once. Now I see my new measure is added to the model. Microsoft Fabric customers can not only run DAX queries with Direct Lake Power BI semantic models, but also use Fabric Copilot to help write and explain DAX queries in DAX Query View. So take your data analytics to the next step today by writing DAX queries. Power BI Embedded Analytics Narrative Visual with Copilot available in SAS Embed. The Narrative Visual with Copilot is available for user-owned data scenarios, or SAS, and Secure Embed. This means when a user embeds a report, the Narrative Visual, in a solution where users must sign in, they will now be able to refresh the visual with their data. This is the first step on our Copilot Embed journey. The Narrative Visual with Copilot is now supported in Embed for Your Organization scenarios where the user owns the data and in Secure Embed scenarios. 
Now there is a little bit of setup required for the embed your organization scenarios to work properly. So let's go over to Microsoft Azure and check it out in enter ID. Let's go to your registered application. And once we're here, we can go down to API permissions where we can see all of the permissions that your application already has. And we're gonna add a new one that will allow Copilot to make sure that it's working properly within your application. Under APIs, my organization uses, search for Power BI service and click delegated permissions. Here we can search for our specific permission under ML models. If you expand the options here, we can click this first one, ML model, execute all. This is the one we need to make sure that Copilot works properly in our embedded solutions. This is all we need to do for this setup here. So let's go ahead and refresh the embedded solution that I already have. It's very simple. It does not look as good as the ones that you will create, I am sure. But let's go ahead and refresh this. Um, I already have a report loaded here that has a narrative visual and you can see that I am not getting an error here. It is loading properly. And here I'll see my narrative load. And it of course is gonna work perfectly with my slicers and all of the filters that I have on the page so that my end users and myself can stay up to date with all of the data in real time right here in my embedded solution. We can't wait to hear all the ways that you use it as well. Visualizations. This month, we're highlighting a whole bunch of visualizations for you. We have editor's picks of the quarter, new visuals and app source, and another list of visuals for you to take a look at. Please enjoy. That's it for the updates. Each month, we highlight a community member that's making a positive impact in our community. Meet Jennifer Ratten. Jennifer has been a Power BI community member since 2020. She's received over 300 kudos, authored over 180 solutions, and has over 670 replies. Jennifer is a Learn Together series presenter and generously volunteered her time at Fabcon 2024 in Las Vegas. Thank you for all you do, Jennifer, and thanks for being a part of our community. Well, that's all for this month. Please visit our Power BI community forums at aka.ms forward slash PBI community. It's the best place for you to get connected with others and get your questions answered. Please continue to tell us how we can do better in the comments. We are listening. Like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Next month's edition of this video will drop a little bit later in the month to align with our announcements at Fabcon Europe. We look forward to sharing more with you at that time and hope to see you in person in Stockholm.